What is up everybody, it's Dante Walton here. Today I'm going to react to episode 4 of X-Men 97, but before we get things started, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe for more content like this coming soon. Yeah, last episode on uh, X-Men 97, kind of a lot happened actually, now that I think about it. Well, we find out the Jean Grey was cloned by Mr. Sinister. The Jean Grey that we've been following, at least from the beginning of X-Men 97, we don't know for how long, has been the actual clone um and yeah and then mr sinister like basically like yeah he has like some sort of control in her she becomes the goblin queen then they break free of that to save uh her and cyclops the son nathan and she she's the name madeline Pryor. he gets the techno virus thing from mr sinister so he gets set into the future with bishop so yeah, it seems like Bishop is now currently out of the team. We'll see if he's actually in the intro. Because I like how they've been adding and subtracting members as like they come and go from the actual X-Men. That's actually really cool. Uh, so all that happens. I think most people can probably guess which character uh, that baby is going to become and all that. So I'm just curious to see how that's going to progress. And uh, also with Storm at the end, she's meeting with Forge in this bar in Texas. And yeah, he seems like he can maybe help her regain her power somehow. I'm not sure how exactly, so I wonder if we're going to continue with that also. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm assuming it's probably going to be more focused on Storm's thing, because that was like, kind of like the, like the little closer there at the end. So we'll see. Um, yeah, without further ado, let's just jump into Season Store for Episode 4. I've been really enjoying this series, so let's see. Oh, this is... That sounded different, okay. That was cool, though. Yeah, Bishop was removed. Oh, the Mojo episode. That's the episode that I'm most fond of from a childhood. I had that on VHS. I saw it so many times. Oh, that the whole thing. Yeah, he was the... Forge was the leader of X-Factor. That was Polaris. I remember that whole thing. With, like, Iceman and all that. I like how they're showing like relevant clips of probably what the episode's gonna be about, maybe. Wait, Mojo episode? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Motendo? Okay, yeah, it's definitely. But our new boss beat you to the pot. It's three sugars. Hmm. I'll take a cappuccino if you just take an orders. No. Luckily, I am giving them. Hmm. After breakfast, the X-Men will report to the danger room for drills. Surely our youngest member deserves some jubilation on her 18th birthday. Ah, uh, okay. Kid deserves it. Jubilee will see far more birthdays should she learn to master her powers to face a world that despises her. <laughs> Someone's daddy didn't get him a pony for his sweet 16. <laughs> My parents perished. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna say more if you don't wanna go there. Let's go to the arcade. It'll be just like old times. What do we think? The arcade? Hey, I'm wearing actually the X-Men arcade t-shirt, so that's cool. What's wrong with just one day where I don't have to freak out about the professor or Jean and her clone? <laughs> they aren't even here because they just had to go play mutant politics at the United Nations. Genosha entering the UN is a big deal. Yeah. You actually do play video games? Uh, this might be make or break. Shut up, Only man. People who hate video games are bad at video yeah, games. Yeah, would you believe? This one isn't mine. Never even heard of a Motendo. Oh god, no. What? They're gonna go in the video game or something? I don't even know how she got that, but something has to do with Mojo. What's it doing? Oh, yep. Look at those things. Oh, snap. What time is it? How long were we playing? I assume I won. Hey! Let's go! Oh, okay. It's funny how Magneto said that they go to the danger room for drills. This is almost like a danger room in a way, I guess. It's like some sort of simulation. You know, it would be a lot easier if you just used your powers. What if there's cameras around? We haven't had like a character so far like in the X-Men who's like is like secretly a mutant, you know? Usually they've just been open about it. Whoa. Genosha? But like way back when, Genosha? I was trapped here with Storm, Gambit too, and a bunch of other mutants, all enslaved to build yeah. Bolivar Trask. The dude who created the Sentinels? 
these are the exact characters that are there too. I remember them. I remember thinking like, hey, is that Domino and stuff? Like, yeah. Yeah. Game's glitching out. Maybe it was her. Ooh. Was that you? Who's Hot that? Topic stalker <laughs> calling us earlier on the phone. Sister L. Who is that? Duh, we are totally in a video game. We're what? Pay attention to the young lady. Oh, here's Mojo. Oh, he looks. Love the totally. He looks even creepier somehow. <laughs> My greatest hit. Putting the X-Men through overly complicated death yeah. traps to entertain my slaves! Uh, indentured audiences! Sorry! Looks like you've been dieting? Yeah, I was gonna say, he looks, he looks like... Some nap, some chuck. Like a little shriveled. Ah, thirsty for the next big thing, dirty girl! <laughs> That's why I made the pivot to video games! The future of mind numbering! Alright, he's actually not, maybe not wrong. Oh yeah, I preferred him way fat. Okay, he looks he looks creepier this way. Every level is based off your own memory. Oh, okay. you play through your own life. You connect with the youth. You're their point of view. Yeah, he. If you remember, he made a lot of meta commentary. That li literally Jubilee was. That's the role she played in the X Men animated series. I don't want to say something scary, like if you die in the game, you die in real life, but... Let me guess, if you die in the game, you die in real life. <laughs> Jubilee, be young forever, replay the golden age. This is almost like a prototype of like Twitch streaming, all the people watching the game being played. The old X-Men are totally old school. Who's the boss? Magneto. Storm, uh, different words. Okay. Divorce court, Summers versus Grey. <laughs> That's funny. You're my X-Men, Jubilee, so... Game on! <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, I love this 16-bit artwork. And that looks just like the arcade game that I was talking about. With the beat-em-up. Classic game. The Days of Future Past art back there. That's cool. Yo, 16-bit artwork is so cool. Oh my god, it's literally the beat-em-up. That's so awesome. I love hearing the 16-bit theme too. Oh, here's the mojo I'm familiar with. <laughs> oh, that guy Sauron or whatever his name was. Do you have like extra lives or something? I don't know. Oh, there was a spiral there for a second. How did you get my health back? That wasn't me. He's at it again. Oh uh, yeah. This is what you get when you kill tech support. Uh. Asteroid I acted like I hated mutants. And your mind tried saying they were good ones, but I could tell she was spooked. So I said they're all freaks and normal people would win. <laughs> Self-deprecation from Roberto here. I can't wait to see like his whole arc to see like when he accepts being a human. I mean a mutant and you know, Matthew especially when he, his mom finds out. Game over? Did they have extra lives? Please tell me they have extra lives. I am Magneto. Oh no! Roberto's health is oh, gone! He... He's dying! He's got a pattern of attack. Typical yep. boss battle should Yep, be yep. See? This will... It pays to be a gamer. You just gotta learn the pattern. One more. I also love seeing the classic Magneto outfit in this art style. K.O. No, no. Uh. Oh, uh, health. Health extra item. Life. Oh, extra life. An extra life? <laughs> Did I die? Was I dead? I found an extra life. Someone is definitely helping us. I don't I don't speak justifiably angry Portuguese. <laughs> Yoink. I'm really curious to see who is, this is that's like in the game helping them. No need for thank you among friends. And by friends, I mean you. I hacked you out of the game server. Well, this, whatever this place is, is cool. She's a plot twist. She's in league with Mojo. Zip it, Zip it Costa. Costa. 
H Jubilee. Like I said, Whoa. we go way back. Whoa, it is Jubilee. You gotta test a game before launch. <laughs> Running endless trial loops with you two was too risky, so Mojo needed beta testers. Digital replicas of me. Mm. I'm the only one left. Living doesn't get cheat codes or extra lives. Life's a total risk and it's on you. Take it. So Magneto was right. A bit. But he's totally wrong about one thing. Video games rule. Yeah. The X-Men arcade game. That's literally the X-Men arcade cabinet. Two Jubilees. Caesars. <laughs> oh, the real final boss. Yep. Let's go. I think he fell off his diet. Fine by me. The bigger they are. The harder they fall. The harder they pop. All right, that was actually better. <laughs> wow, I can do that? That ain't the half of it. Just you wait. Oh, yeah. Unleashing her true potential. I got him. All right. Embrace your mutant hood, Roberta. Whoa! That's cool. Rats may have canceled me today, but I swear I'll cut you in the reboot. Hmm. Whoa! Whoa! Ah, the other Jubilee is gone. The <laughs> spiral. I hope she joins like the just leaves Mojo's side of this one. Roberto, you could have Yeah. Talk about risk. Oh. That sparks. Oh, it's like a Okay, that was like one episode. Now there's another one. Alright. Storm? Oh, okay, so this this is the storm part. Interesting that they did like a two episode thing. But okay. Maybe they thought Motendo didn't have enough story to fill a whole episode, yes. My papa's bison chili. It's a leaner cut. Gives room for the spices to do their magic. Well, a friend of Charles Xavier is a friend of mine. I owe that fellow a great deal. How does it work? A mutant who can invent anything he can conceive. I can get at parts of the brain that are normally dormant in humans. Or simply a genius. May I ask? I was a soldier. There was a war. I miss soaring. The wind in my hair, so powerful it's hard to breathe, but so fresh as to be worth it. Your mutant gifts have allowed you to fix yourself. What a blessing. It wasn't anything to fix. Just adapted and got a little creative. Hmm. That's a nice sentiment. These landscapes are beautiful, by the way. Especially with the music and all that, the score on this show is excellent, in my opinion. All right, Storm. Gotta be a little bit careful. Can't fly anymore. The goddess lives. Beautiful, isn't it? That owl. I've seen him before, circling. The winds here never shift. They always blow east, stuck like this owl. You more than anyone know how fast the weather can change. The real trick to reversing what the executioner did to you wasn't making an inverted version of its radiation. It was creating a machine. There's the X Factor is cool. Channel such power. Wonder if we'll see them in the show. That'd be cool. Especially that Quicksilver. They had the whole episode where him and Scarlet Witch found out that Magneto was their father. Okay, Aurora. Give it a try. Winds? Heed my command. Rise, winds, and move the desert sands. <laughs> yeah, it can't come that easy. Please. Why is fixing me so important to you? After the war. I didn't have the resources to build what I so easily saw in my mind. The Defense Department offered to help me, as long as I helped them build some devices. Hmm. Devices that could be used to... Mm, he created the collar. Don't tell me. This is like his repentance. 
No, no, no. You made these? Oh, man. A scientist in Scotland did. Using my early designs, rough strokes at best. So this is his way of trying to make it up for all this? If I told you the truth in Dallas, you wouldn't have let me help you. So you lied, my weaver of lies. It hasn't all been lies. This, this is not a lie. Mm -hmm. Catching feelings. I could live forever, and still my endless imagination would never conceive of a thing as perfect as you. A perfect path to your redemption. You are a goddess. Powers be damned. How do you not see that? I love you. Oh, wow. Oh. You meant to make me a goddess. Instead, you have fashioned a fool. I mean, yeah. Storm is totally justifiable in feeling how she's feeling. Like, yeah. Like, what he helped create has been used against the mutants, you know? To take away their powers and neutralize them. Take away what makes them them. How did I return here? What is going on? What is happening? What? What is this? Get out of my home, you damn demon! What is going on here? Is this death? No, you live. Disappointed. Trapped here, haunted. I feast on misery. And I, the adversary, shall not waste my meal. That's Storm's voice, right? Oh, interesting way to end it off there. Okay. This episode was structured interestingly. I'll talk about it. Let's talk about this. All right, so that was episode four of X Men '97. Yeah, an interesting one. Not my favorite of the ones so far, I gotta say, but yeah, the way that was almost like kind of like a like shows like SpongeBob SquarePants, Adventure Time regular show, like a lot of those type of shows where it's like fairly odd parents, where it's like two episodes in one like package or whatever, like two like eleven minute episodes or whatever. That's almost like what this reminded me of, which is interesting because the original X Men show was not like that at all. It's just like a full block was one episode. Um, and I guess they didn't want to do the A story, B story thing, like take like going back and forth between like the Motendo stuff and then Storm and Forge's story. So that actually makes sense why they did it this way. I just found it interesting. But uh, yeah, let's talk about the first story first, the Motendo one. Again, it was cool to see Mojo back. Like I said before, the episode where Mojo like takes the X Men and makes them like compete in all these different reality shows was the episode of X Men the animated series I saw like so much as a kid. I had it on VHS. And yeah, I'd watch it over and over. So that's the episode I remember the most from my childhood for sure. Um, so it was cool seeing that and it was really cool seeing a lot of references to the X-Men arcade game, which is the shirts right here. The actual arcade cabinet, the character select, the, the UI of it all, it just totally was a reference to that. So that was really cool. Funny enough, that arcade game is based on the the pride of the x-men if i'm not mistaken which was a pilot that didn't get picked up for like a previous x-men cartoon and then later on they retooled it to make x-men the animated series you know from the 90s so that's oh that's pretty interesting to see um but yeah i really loved the 16-bit artwork it looked really good actually it looked just like the just like a video game actually Sometimes when you see these shows or movies where it's supposed to look like a video game, it just looks doesn't. It looks just like whatever animation they're doing or whatever. So it's really cool seeing it from the outside view, seeing it in like the the sixteen bit art style looking just like a video game. But then when we go into the action, it's what we see traditionally in the X Men ninety seven um, like action cinematography and all that. So we got the best of both worlds there actually. So that was cool. Also, I wasn't sure, but yeah, I saw in the credits that, yeah, the other Jubilee that was there, that was totally the original voice actress, Allison Court, from the 90s one. Like, I was like, it sounds similar, but I don't know, because I guess Holly Chow, she does a really good job at um, sounding like the original voice actress, so that's pretty cool, actually. So yeah, it's cool seeing her as like the older Jubilee, like digital double. It's funny that we had, previously we had the clone of Jean Grey, and now we have like 
the digital older version of Jubilee. So yeah, I wonder how we're gonna if that's like a trend that's gonna be continuing. We'll see. Um, but yeah, all that was was fun. It's really I'm really makes me more curious about like where, um, yeah, where Jubilee and Roberto are gonna go and be going because yeah, the kiss it seems like they're gonna be sparking up a romantic relationship for sure. Um, but I'm curious to see if Roberto's gonna accept that he's a mutant and just be open about it and if his mom's gonna find out and how she'll react because we saw previously how like self-deprecating he was he was like ashamed of it he would even like talk to his mother saying oh how they're all freaks and all that the normal people will will win and all this saying thinking that that's what he needs to say thinking that's what his mother will believe as well um so hopefully he'll just embrace that with the help of jubilee and the rest of the x-men because we haven't had a character like in the X-Men, at least the anime series or whatever, um, canon, we haven't really dealt with that sort of issue where they have, they're not even open to being a mutant. They're like closeted mutant. So that's actually pretty interesting. Usually like, even if they feel conflicted about their mutant abilities or whatever, they've at least been open about the fact that they're mutants, you know? And it's not like something they're hiding. So that should be interesting. And also Jubilee, we saw like what her other older version could do and like, it's gonna be cool to see she's 18 she's growing up now seeing like where her full powers can maybe i don't know like see see if she can reach her full potential power wise because it was really cool what, what the two of them are doing together that was actually really cool to see remind me of another show anime actually that came out i don't want to say because it'll be a spoiler where a character in the older version they both like work together to defeat like the villain and all that so that was really cool it reminded me of that um yeah, now on to the, what's it called, Life Death? The Storm and Forge storyline. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Like, I was the one, I was kind of picking up on some romantic undertones in the whole, like, dinner scene where Forge, like, made her the, the bison chili, the biscuits. Um, yeah, and we see that Forge, at least, he has feelings for Storm. And maybe she kind of did, too, at some point. But then when it was revealed that he helped to create the mutant... Um, neutralizing collars. Man, that's pretty interesting. I'd never really fully understood Forge's powers before, and I don't remember if they really explained it well in the '90s one. But it's cool, like like basically anything he can think of, like creating, like like he thinks of it in his mind, and he can like create it if he has the resources for it and all that. Of course, so that's pretty cool. It's like a genius inventor type power. If he can think, he can build it, kind of. Um, so yeah, like, he felt lost after the war, like, he was seriously injured, we see. I'm not entirely sure which war specifically, I don't know if it matters or not. But yeah, um, that, yeah, he worked with, like, the government, and his, like, sketches and designs helped create, like, the mutant neutralizing collars, and yeah, like, him trying to fix Storm, who he sees as a goddess, is not the only person to call her a goddess, Magneto was saying the same thing. Like, people see, think of her so highly... As a, yeah, she has an Omega level mutant and all that too, and she can control the weather, like something so essential to nature and all that. So it makes sense people view her as that. But he like wants to fix her again, kind of like we're seeing in Invincible, like people trying to fix other people. The sentiment doesn't always work well, you know. Like some people don't literally want to be fixed. They can they want to be helped, but like trying to fix them and to try to reach like whatever you put them on the pedestal to be. Like, the, all these people are putting her on a pedestal to be goddess and all that. And yes, like, she misses her mutant abilities and all that, and she was proud of them. I don't know, it feels a little weird to me. Especially when he, like, admitted he had, he had feelings for her and all that. And he was like, I love you, and Storm just like, pop. Like, I don't blame her for doing that. I understand exactly why she feels that way. But yeah, Forge is just trying to repent for the damage he felt he caused by playing some part even, even though he didn't directly create the mutant collars or his uh, designs and all that lead them to be created. His power was like, uh, I don't know, like his idea and genius was used for bad. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Albert Einstein and stuff like that. People whose scientific discoveries were used to create these weapons that, I don't know, they hurt a lot of people. So that should be interesting. And I don't have no idea what's going on with that demon owl thing 
going on there. I don't know if they're in another simulation or what, but it was weird because like Storm fell through the roof and the roof got repaired again, and this demon owl thing came out. She was talking about the owl before, how she saw it earlier, just circling around and around. So we'll have to see what happens there. Um, yeah, I wonder if that's going to have a whole episode, like the continuation of that story to itself. Or if it's going to be another half episode thing. We'll see. Um, but yeah, leave any thoughts you have in this comments. Leave any thoughts you have in this episode in the comments down below. Catch you all next time. Bye.